You've got a feel for variables versus constants, predicates versus subjects, the quantifiers know some and all, and taking advantage of bound variables and their scope to translate everyday phrases into logic. If that's not true, please go back and watch the last three videos in this series. It's time to move on to logical operators, or connectives. Logical connectives. Let's build our sentences out a bit more. To do that, let's start with the logical connectives AND and OR. We can join two symbols with AND. The conjunction can come between two statements like she saw Bob and the house is red or this is a fish and fish can swim. The conjunction might come between two variables like x and y. But AND has less obvious applications. If we want to say that Bob is a good person, we can break that sentence into Bob is human and Bob is good. We can render some good person as for some x, x is human and x is good. Like many operators, and may be represented by different symbols in different texts. For now, stick with one and learn others as needed. Also, let me mention that the meaning of this logical and is pretty strong. It asserts both things being joined, so it's vanilla and chocolate means that it's both vanilla and chocolate. It's not the weak and of you can choose between vanilla and chocolate where you actually mean or. Speaking of or, we can join sentences with or as well. This disjunction might come between two statements like P or Q, like this is vanilla or this is chocolate, but we can also use it with variables X or Y. So everything is vanilla or chocolate means that all X's are vanilla, chocolate, or both. Both? Yes, this OR is called inclusive. So when you're joining two things with the logical OR, realize that you're saying the first thing, the second thing, or both of them. If you want to rule out the option of both of them, you have to use what's called an exclusive OR. It's vanilla or it's chocolate, but it's not chocolate plus vanilla. These ANDs and ORs bring up a topic I, I brought up before, the scope of a quantifier. Look at what happens when two predicates are in a quantifier's scope. It applies to both of them. For all x, x is human and x can swim just means everybody can swim. For some x, x is dirty or x is cluttered, something is dirty or cluttered, where you're saying that this thing may be dirty, cluttered, or both dirty and cluttered. Last, for some x, x is not dirty or x is not cluttered, with an exclusive or. What happens when you negate two symbols joined by AND or OR, like not chocolate or vanilla? A set of rules known as De Morgan's Laws will help you deal with those cases. If you want to say not chocolate and vanilla, you'll re represent the phrase as not chocolate or vanilla. On the flip side, you, when you want to say not chocolate or vanilla, this comes out as not vanilla and chocolate. In logic, not chocolate or vanilla is treated the same as not chocolate and not vanilla well not chocolate and vanilla is treated like not chocolate or not vanilla. Before moving on to the rest of the connectives, here are a few phrases to translate. Use and or or, that's either and or or for each statement. On to some new stuff. You're probably already familiar with the equals symbol. As you'd expect, this indicates a logical equivalence, like some x is equal to some y. Nothing new here, so let's move on. Consider sentences where you say that if one thing is true, then something else follows. This if-then construction is very important in logic. We'll use it to structure even very basic statements where it's hidden in ordinary language. Let's take the statement, English is a language no if then there. The logic for this simple sentence is actually for all x, if x is English, then x is a language. We can translate it this way. Where the horseshoe symbol is the if then conditional. Take another sentence. This time everybody swims. In logic, that's for all x, if x is human, then x swims. There are other popular symbols for this conditional like the left to right arrow. Like the versions of ands and nots, there are different ways of writing the same symbol. The logic is the same. There's another type of conditional called the biconditional. 
The meaning here is quite different. It's if and only if. Let's take the sentence, only water is refreshing. The sentence means for all x, x is refreshing if and only if x is water. Ratchet this up one level. It's only edible if it's good food. Here we mean for all x, x is edible if and only x, if x is good and x is food. Notice that this if and only if is really strong. What's refreshing has to be water, and what's water has to be refreshing. Likewise, what's good food has to be edible, and what's edible has to be good food. Next one. When you're drawing a conclusion in language, you often use the word therefore. This therefore indicates that whatever follows is implied by whatever came before. You can show this in logic with a triple dot before your conclusion. Let's say you propose a simple line of reasoning like everybody knows something. John's somebody, so he knows something. You're probably getting used to translations into logic by now, so I'll let you figure those phrases out. The first one, that's right, for all x, for some y, if x is human, then x knows y. That's everybody knows something. Your next line is simple. John is human. And the last, therefore, for some y, John knows y. That's just about all the basic stuff you need to begin uncovering the logic behind everyday language. Of course, there are other logics that expand the use of formal logic and give it a variety of applications. Let's take a look at one basic example of such a logic called modal logic. Modal logic allows you to incorporate modals into the formal structure. I briefly explored modal verbs in the lessons on morphology or the grammar of words in language. Examples of modal verbs in English are can, may, and must. The basic modal symbols in modal logic are it is necessary and it is possible. For example, think of a statement P. Take this as dogs read books. If we say that it is necessary that P, this means it is necessary that dogs read books. We can also say that dogs can read books. It is not necessary that everyone read books, and dogs cannot read books. Notice that when we say something like can or it is possible, that leaves a lot of room to discuss the probability of that possibility, which is one of those topics I'll tackle in the next video. I know I've thrown a lot out at you, but I'm fairly sure you are already getting a feel for how this kind of logic really gets down to the structure of thoughts expressed in language. So let's move on to do a few translations. Pause the video whenever you need some time to think. Whew, that was fun, wasn't it? Well, I'll wrap up these lessons next time with the discussion of how to represent members of a set and express the language of probability in logic. Until next time, keep practicing. Oh.